Welcome to the newest part of Kaiju Labs Media Block Party. We're Learn to Roleplay and we're starting now. Kaiju Labs, where we got our pilot episode for our brand new series, show called Learn to Roleplay, where we're going to take you through the wonderful world of roleplaying, starting from the Hey, It Sounds Cool to Session Zero. That is what totally Season 1 is going to be about. We're going to break down in 13 episodes. And, of course, with me right now, I have... Jeff Ciccoloni. And... Courtney Maynard. As you guys may know, Courtney from various other shows. Jeff has been a veteran for gaming for a while, so Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I started gaming in 1981, the original red box set from Dungeons and Dragons. Um, as a matter of fact, I still have my original dice, the kind that you use a crayon to color in the, the numbers yes. so you can see them. <laughs> yes. Still have that. Out of ivory bones. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, I've played numerous games. Started off with Dungeons and Dragons, obviously, but since then I've done uh, uh, the White Wolf systems. I've done, uh, you know, uh, just about all of them, you know, Palladium, GURPS, Hero, Cortex, kids, um, on, bicycles, kids on bikes, Savage Worlds, a lot of Savage Worlds, um, and <laughs> you know, Star Wars and the, and the whole bit. So, Fantasy Flight Star Wars or Star Wars D6? I do have to ask that question. So originally D6, um, <laughs> but in the last couple of years, it's been Fantasy Flight. Fantasy Flight. It's been the yeah, new yeah. stuff. Star Wars um, has one of those cases of which version of Star Wars were you playing? <laughs> um, and Courtney? Yeah, I'm Courtney Manor. I'm the youngest one out of the set, apparently, because I've only been gaming for about nine years at this point. Yeah, nine years. Uh, mainly thanks to this guy right here. This yes. is my husband. He's the one that introduced me to gaming. That's how we met. It's a total meet cute story. You'll catch that on the site later. Um, but honestly, I've been gaming to the point where I've kind of integrated it into my career. I am writing for a couple of different systems at the moment, doing a couple of settings for them. Yes, there is a difference. We'll get to that later. Um, but honestly, it was through gaming that I just kind of managed to focus my writing career into writing for game creation. The media has just been a fun part uh, that you've got to see before my career kicked off. That's just a nice little fun, not side gig, but side gig <laughs> for me. <laughs> you, you, you were also my guinea pig. Yeah, I'm also this guy's guinea pig. So I mean, Actually, you're a lot say? of people's guinea pig. You are like the lap. I, you are I am the guinea pig. You are yeah. the guinea pig. I'm just thinking it's just not even me at this point. There are some of you that you've been the guinea pig for. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And then there's, of course, there's myself. I, I am Pocky D from fan service. A lot of a lot of interviews. I've been with fan service for, or sorry, Kaiju Labs now for so long that I keep forgetting that we're now rebranded. Um, <laughs> so, yes, I've been with Kaiju Labs for a very long time. I've been role playing since DD 3.0, which has been since 2001. So I got about 20 years on you. You got about 20 years on yeah. me. I wasn't born until 1987, just for the record. <laughs> so, but for me to be fair, I don't want to hear that. To be fair for me, though, it's because I lived in Le I've always lived in Leander, so the nearest gaming store has always been Dragon's Lair for me. Well, you see, growing up in Fresno, California, okay. we had one game store that was about 10 miles from us. We had to take a bus because we were too young to drive. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And it was literally somebody's living room. Yep. Uh, I remember the Dragon's Lair we went to that, was literally a, a house. The, it was yeah. the second Dragon's Lair was a house? Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I'm also the co-owner of LearnToRoleplay.com. There's the other owner, is Courtney. Um, LearnToRoleplay.com is kind of also what this show is based off of, so that's always going to be fun to go to. Um, I also do a panel at cons called How to Roleplay Your Fandom and Make It Good. We changed the title to from something else that everyone's like, hey, that's just too random and negative. Yeah. Um... I talk about how to get your your favorite fandom and turn it into a role playing game and figure out the tropes and everything. Um, the unofficial adaptations kind of thing and how to make it functional. Actually functional, not just trying to shove a Trigun or Digimon or whatever you have you into Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't always work. And then I also have done uh, mostly. I'm a lot of GMing actually. I'm the big GM of the group. Um, yeah. I have a tendency to run some interesting like one shots for various groups. I've I do teaching games at Chupacabra Con um, mm -hmm. because I feel let's see, last three years I've done three or four years I've done three teaching games per con. 
At I'm least awesome. one a day. At yeah. least one 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 a day, and I also do the Savage Saturday Night. So I will do four to five games a con. Yeah, sometimes they're not even on the schedule. They're not even yeah, on the schedule. That's fine. We that's try to have that kind of, that kind of flexibility. I, oh, by I, the way, I'm one of the organizers for ChupacabraCon. Yeah, that's in, in addition to all this other gaming. Yeah. Which my turn my gaming into work, actually. But running a convention <laughs> is a lot of fun. And, it's a fun <laughs> bit of work, right? It's I, like it is. My it is. Gaming so, to so uh, two years ago, when I was first getting super having, hey, I'm going to teach everyone how to play this game because everyone was getting confused. Some people were coming to the con and they didn't know what it was. She goes... Can you play some games? We think you're just here to work. <laughs> I'm like, no, I am having fun. She goes, are you sure? I'm like, yes, no, I'm perfectly fine with this. Uh, as Courtney mentioned before, yes, we met through gaming. Um, mm -hmm. Wasn't really a fan of D&D 4.0, so I went to Shadowrun, which I love the lore of that game, so that's where we moved. And as I, came, and I met her, I was like, hey, I'm going to do this game. Do you want to play a dwarf that dual wheels pistols that can shoot shotgun shells? And she's all like, yeah. I, yeah. And I have a confession to make. Huh. Mm -hmm. In all my decades, apparently, of gaming, I have yet to play Shadowrun. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> I've played everything else. Have you but... played Warhammer? Yes. So you have about a quarter of the dice that you need. In that case, <laughs> we played the, the the Warhammer fan, uh, uh, fantasy role playing game, but and also played uh, Dark Heresy, yeah. which is the Warhammer 40k yeah. uh, role yeah. playing. But Warhammer uses a D6 based system, so does Shadowrun. Um, Shadowrun not anymore. It doesn't. Shadowrun doesn't. No, or not Warhammer. Not Warhammer. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> if you play the t uh, the miniatures game, miniatures so game uh, uses yes. D6. Yeah, she's referring okay, to the miniatures game. Sorry, not the role-playing game, sweetie, made by Fantasy Flight also, or what And they're okay. fond of their special dice. They're they fond, of their, fond of their special dice. dice. But no, this is, yeah, it, 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 in Shadowrun, you need, mo like, every point you have in something, you roll that many dice, plus you can stack skills and whatnot. Did you whatnot. bring out my special bag of D6, or just my dice back? Just your dice back. <laughs> That's right there. Um, <laughs> um, my, my special, I have a bag dedicated to D6, just, just because, because of Shadowrun. Just because of Shadowrun, yeah. Because you need a lot of d6. It's like you roll 12 d6 sometimes because you have three in sword. You have three fighting plus three in sword using plus you also have natural. It's agility, so that's four in agility. So that's three plus three plus four. So that's ten dice plus you know the sword added as an extra two because yeah. it's a sword. Oh, by the way, it's an it's a imbued Not sword, so it's two more sword. Yeah, two more <laughs> dice. Yeah, it really catches up really fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll explain more of these systems in depth. But right now, this is just the introduction episode. Yeah. You get to know us. Because so, honestly, yeah. So real fun. fast, let us explain what the show is about. Um, we based it. We're basing it off loosely on a website that me and Cordy both run, and we're both writing articles for. And we encourage some other people if they want to write articles for us to to uh, let us know. And the premise is this: we're not going to teach you how to play D and D. I am not here to teach you how to play Shadowrun or Genesis or the Star Wars game or Shadow Fist or whatever uh, Feng Shui. Not Shadow Fist. Uh, Feng Shui or any of the other games. Mm. What we're here to talk about is um, how to get those games, how to be a cheerleader for those games, how to recognize what your players want, how to understand the difference between a system and versus a setting, versus what you want to play, versus uh, how you want to play it. We're going to get you from this up after this episode, from episode two on. Our job is going to get you to issue zero. An and episode session zero. session zero and <laughs> session zero is just explained to everybody. It is a session where everyone at this point sits at the table, makes characters, makes backgrounds, and the GM fully explains what is involved in the game. Yeah, That's the going to be the line they're starting with and things like that. Right, and this is also probably where some like, you know, hey, would you mind if I do this to your character, or how is how are you two meaning, or how are you know things. Basically, that, you know, you know how like we're talking about, oh, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the social contracts and everything, backstories, all the fun stuff that kind of develops your world before you even get a chance to step into it. And the and the key thing <clears throat> being that it's really important for the GM to work with the players to coordinate that, and so they're all sharing oh, yeah. that experience. So, and so that's going to be episode twelve and thirteen, and that's going to be a big two parter. And that's how we're going to end our season is with session zero before then we're going to explain to you guys everything you need to know to basically as both players and a gm to get to that point and we're going to have a little bit of fun and do some other stuff randomly too with it also so um 
some of the articles we already have on the website as of our recording is Welcome to the Family, which is my introduction to you guys role playing, and also what you actually need to buy. Mm -hmm. And that's actually going to be an episode later for us, which is thing. Mm -hmm. But Jeff, for you, what is the biggest misconception for what you think people have for a role playing? Just simply what's in, involved. I, I don't think you know when they're when they're first starting out. I don't think they necessarily understand what the uh, uh, point is behind getting a, around a table and sharing this experience. All right. Mm -hmm. A lot of folks um, go in thinking it's us versus them. You know, the players against the GM or the GM against the players and that kind of thing. And it is not that at all. Right. It's all about a shared experience, developing a story. Um, you know, writing a book essentially together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what do you, what do you, you know? I mean, it's that. I mean, we've already gotten past the uh, whole chicks tracks days of D and D is evil and devil summoning. I know. lived through that. You, you lived through that. <laughs> I'm glad you lived through that. I, 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 I actually have been reading a lot of. I'm actually tempted to write a thing about the satanic panic and how. Yeah how a lot of that started and how, um, for those who don't know, the Satanic okay. Panic, and me and Jeff will both, because I lived <laughs> in the 80s. I, I'm too young for this part. Yeah, too young <laughs> for this part, but Jeff and I both, because I remember for rock and roll and <laughs> for movies, because I was into horror movies and yeah. you know all that, but basically during the 80s, a doctor, a psychological doctor, convinced everyone that D&D &D was Satanic uh, and was going to lead you to a murderer. And this was because of an incident uh, that we now know is the Mazes and Monsters incident. People call it the Mazes, some people call it the Mazes and Monsters incident. It's named after the actual gentleman. I forgot his name. Uh, he was played by Tom Hanks in the movie. Right. Basically, he was an introvert. He had depression issues. He had big mental issues. And he was using D&D &D as self-medication to deal never with a his, good idea. Never a good idea. Uh, he was also using other non self uh, things to be self medicated over. Mm -hmm. It was turned out that he was doing drugs and whatnot. He ends up, his character ends up dying after having a particularly bad day. This is part of the thing they leave out in the story in the movie. They just say his character dies, and he goes on a sp he goes on and end up like going on crazy, kills a homeless person, nearly commits suicide. His family and his friends pull him back. And the court basically deems him insane, and he lives with his family. I don't know if he still lives with his family or whatnot, but I know that that is the extent of that is the extent of my knowledge. But of that's him. a whole lot of mental illness. And the other misconception that I was getting to, huh. um, <laughs> when, before I mentioned the satanic panic, and these two jumped in. <laughs> no, no, it's just that's. <laughs> it's a good thing to explain because it is a nice little bit of history, but that does bring up another thing, which is. A lot of people play this, and you don't realize how many people play role-playing games. We've had uh, several celebrities recently, like Joe Manganiello and his wife, Sofia Vergara. They have an entire section of their basement dedicated his to... Man cave is, is, his is... man cave, and she goes in there too because she likes playing with him, is dedicated to Dungeons and & Dragons, and he's actually brought that to hospitals uh, about a, what, a year, year yeah. and a half ago. It was actually a big story in the news that... He brought these games to one of his local children's hospitals to play, and everybody loved it. Nobody realized he was that into D&D at the time. Now it's just all over the place. It's not just, like, the nerdier celebrities like Will Wheaton. It is Vin Diesel. Um... It actually was a uh, former basketball player. The San Antonio Spurs was a D&D &D fan. Yeah. In fact, they had a cake made of that looked like the three books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that was his, like, birthday cake. Well, um, I can't, and I cannot count how many... Get military guys and girls, I know. Yeah, the military loves role playing games. Because <laughs> you just need one book, you have infinite number of, of, of hours, hours of, of, entertainment. of entertainment. And yeah, and you don't need electricity, you don't need a lot of things. And um, there's also been, because of social media, a nice mm -hmm. outpour of people. Like, I belong to a D&D &D group that are, it's not so much D&D, &D, but it's called D&D &D with family and your friends. And it's about, you know, people like, hey, my five year old kid wants to get into this, how do I do it? Or, hey, I've been Dean Dean, and my kid wants to get into it. How should I approach this? Like, yeah. And for some of us, it's like, well, that's really easy. For, but it's like, 
But if you step back and think about it for a second, it's like, yeah, it's really easy for a group of adults because anything goes. Yeah, but for kids, kids maybe you, you need to adjust it. adjust it a little bit. And that is something we're also going to be talking about later in the game Is in, in one of our episodes <laughs> is how to address all that. Like I said, we have 13 episodes planned of this. This is episode one. Yeah. So it's going to be a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff. Um, that, it's um, also very, very... It's used in therapies a lot. Yeah. Not just the structured role-playing games like D&D or Savage Worlds, but also little one-shots that are meant to be therapeutic-based. That's a big thing in LARP communities, especially Nordic LARPs. Not all of them are happy-feely LARPs. A lot of them are dark head spaces that you take a while to decompress from. We actually had a, a gentleman at ChibacabraCon this year who was talking to a lot of the game developers about that very thing. Because mm -hmm. he was a therapist and he was using games to, in his therapy yeah. and he wanted to talk to some developers about actually making a role-playing game specifically for Therapies. that purpose. Yeah. There's, a, there's one called Imagination. I kind of missed him then. I don't know if I got a chance to talk to him. That's there's like one, there's a me. game called Imagination where the heroes, are, a virus or uh, something happens in London, like modern day London, mm -hmm. And the only people who are immune to it are people with mental disorders. Yeah. And, but everyone else will literally go mad from it. Like, you'll start hearing things. But the bigger your disorder, the more you're immune to it. And, but you have to kind of keep balance. things balanced. Because if you start going too much normal heads, but like balanced heads, what they call balanced headspace, because this was developed by, um, by two psychologists, um, you go into a kind of a balanced headspace, the things in the outside can start affecting you. Yeah. Because they, that's what they pry on. I actually have that on my uh, PDF yeah. files because I bought that at one point. So some of the Spider webs... was free at one point, but I have it. So real fast, we are going to be talking about a lot of various games and a lot of various terms. We are having, as you can see here on the lower thirds, the lower thirds we're going to use is probably some prompts and whatnot, and maybe some jokes as long as you go on the way. But trust <laughs> me, guys, if we say something in it, <coughs> we realize it might be like a term we're all used to, but maybe not... Everyone Lingo. else, there will, will be, be definitions. There will be there. definitions below. I'm the one that has to edit them, so I, I will make sure to put them in. So real fast, let's go ahead and talk about this real fast. ChupacabraCon, because we're always there. We love ChupacabraCon. <laughs> so ChupacabraCon happens the first weekend of May every year mm -hmm. um, in Round Rock, Texas. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's a great little uh, uh, convention where we have a lot of authors and game creators who are there to play games, play games with their fans, play games with each other. Yeah, um, that gets fun. <laughs> when, they, when the creators get together, I've witnessed this, and it's just yeah. like, I, it's hilarity. We, we, at, at this point, we're at a 10 to, uh, uh, 9 to 1 ratio. For every nine uh, yes. pay, paid attendees, we have a, a An industry guest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. And that doesn't include us, by the way. Yeah, it doesn't include us. <laughs> but you will always find us. I'll always be doing teaching games for Savage Worlds and possibly some other systems coming up in the near future. And Courtney will be doing other stuff also. I, I will definitely be at Chip Capricorn whether I'm running games for whatever <laughs> it goes on or whether I'm representing yeah. whatever I've written that <laughs> that's come out. And we, we have a reputation of just being a very relaxed, laid back very, very game. Chill. We, I actually mentioned that in a comment earlier <laughs> online. Like, hey, if you're looking to get your feet wet at a tabletop con, go to this one. Very yeah. chill. I, to, uh, <laughs> Most of our uh, celebrity celebrity guests, our, our industry guests, mm -hmm. um, come because they want to be there. Not because we reach out and say, hey, you need to be there or anything like that. They've mm -hmm. come to one of our events. They had such a good time that they come back every year. Okay. And these folks are coming from the East Coast, the West Coast, Colorado. a lot from Denver. Uh, <laughs> Denver is like coming the hub of where these... But you also have like every year we also have a... Uh, you have a... Uh, you have a... Uh, no, the charity, the, the charity game. So we have the charity, charity game, game, which every year, yeah, which is, and that's where all the your 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 industry <laughs> guests um, get to be weird or the normal. Um, Chickens in the Mist is particularly one of the <laughs> that's highlights. That's the one I'm thinking of because yeah. I just. Well, Ed Letterman does a great job. Yes. Um, also, but every time before that, though, we always have the tailgate. Because because there's a setting in Savage Worlds called ETU, which stands for the East, East Texas, Texas University. University. We Rams. have an East Texas University tailgate party, That's which we all have to sing the song, and then all the industry <laughs> people are just standing around, and everyone's just standing around playing stupid college games, but that are like really family friendly, like the the mm -hmm. 
pong, uh, beer pong table, but it's actually like gigantic buckets and people are just chunking them in. Um, and we're all eating, just having fun. Um, there's always a charity auction every yep. year that... We I can... There have been some items on that list. I'm just going... I was out like two bids ago, <laughs> and it's still going. So, uh, Chupacabra Con um, is a... A charity event. We raise money for Extra Life. So everything yeah. that we make um, mm -hmm. through the auctions, to the charity events, and uh, um, a, the majority of our gate um, mm -hmm. goes to Extra Life every year. Yeah. Um, and we also have uh, the folks from the Mind's Eye Society, which is live action role playing, um, who have a big events there every year, and uh, they will mm -hmm. usually outdo us in their donations. Their yeah. Yeah, I think. Combined between Mind's Eye and our auction, we raised like five thousand last year. Or am uh, I under over? Am I under or over? I can't remember. For last year, it was about five thousand. Yeah, five thousand. Yeah. yeah, the previous like, year yeah. was closer to eight. Yeah. And this year, this year you're gonna have some. You have already started listing some guests, and it's like, you got who? You got what? Oh, <laughs> they're gonna make this awesome. Was it? Was it the first year Shane and them? We had Round Rock. I know the Texas Savages, which is the big Savage Rolls group here here in Texas. Uh, we have a big Discord and everything. Everyone was like, "Okay, who's bringing the Round Rock Donuts?" <laughs> it's like <laughs> Shane's was... getting bombarded. Like everyone's like Shane I and Sean. That was that was year three for us. Yeah. Uh, the, but the first year we held it in Round Rock. The first two years we were in Austin, um, mm -hmm. which just got too pricey for us. Yeah. Um, so we moved out to Round Rock. We love the location. They're treating us really well there. Um, hopefully, we don't outgrow it, but we might. Yeah. Um, well, if you keep but, being awesome. <laughs> if you keep being awesome, there is a brand new resort being built just down the road. That yeah, we'll find out what they cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what that one looks like, but I'd like to stay in our doctor. Uh, I, I'd, I'd like to have money left over to give to the charity. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, you guys, like, we, we gave donuts. Like, everyone's always just super friendly and family mm -hmm. there. Like, you know, there, there's always a couple outcasts, but you'll never... I have seen families who, like, their kids are just getting into this, and they had, like, you can see at first they're like, um, so, what are all these guys? Like, yeah. they'll see me in the giant beard. <laughs> and when I GM, if you guys saw you guys saw my GMing game, I stand, because I don't sit down, because I need to, when I teach, I need to see everyone, right. what they're doing. Which is not uncommon for most GMs, to stand yeah. during the session, but yeah. Um, like, I'll you and stand during a session. I'll kind I, of go I, between both. <laughs> I, I literally, one time during a game, had an NPC get mad and storm off. So I literally just stormed off of my <laughs> table, just like, Dah, how dare you? And I literally had another person from Booth who was just a couple tables away from me going, so did, did they upset you? Like, what happened to that one playing group? I'm like, no, no, no. no they just met the wrong NPC. Yeah. Well, two years ago, we talk about you know families getting involved. Two years ago, um, we had a family that was staying at the hotel for something else. Yes, I remember And that. they were captivated by all the activity that was happening even so late at night in the mm -hmm. convention space behind the hotel. And so they came over to see what we were all about. We said, well, you know, um, come on in, check it out. Um, we have some family events, events for kids. We have mm -hmm. a, a number of things happening. Um, and, you know, if you like it, come back and pay for a, 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 a ticket and enjoy it. And they came back the next day and they bought a ticket and they went in and Mm -hmm. um, with their two kids and had a great time. And I think they've, I've seen them back since. They've been back since? Yeah. All right. so. Well, guys, we got to get ready to wrap up because Kaiju Labs, we still have some more stuff going on. One more thing really quick. Sure. Um, if you can't happen to make it out to Round Rock, look for your local gaming convention. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Always support your local gaming convention. I will actually put up a list on the website, and I will point that list through a slide. So, <laughs> so yes. <laughs> But yes, right now, yes, for your local gaming conventions, there's so many of them yeah. and so many good ones out there yeah. run by people with a lot of passion. You'll know when you walk into the convention, okay, these people mean it, they're here for the right reasons because mm -hmm. it will feel like your table. Yeah. It will hopefully feel like your table, at least if you're starting just starting off. Well, guys, like I said, Kaiju Labs is still going to be going on next show, next episode. I think it's going to be very interesting because. Knowing Kaiju Labs, we always do. We've got some new projects up, and we have some old projects returning. But right now, we're going to let you guys go. But next episode, it's going to be system versus setting. We're going to start off everything with what the difference between a system and a setting is. So catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.